Hey folks, John from Ride Upstate here, and I just watched a video from David, one of the co-founders of Para, and I wanted to watch it with you and provide some responses, kind of react to it, and also share some of my thoughts about what he's sharing in the video. All right, let's get going. Hi everyone, it's David here, back with Q&A. I've heard from a number of you asking where I've been for the past week. Uh, as you can probably hear in my voice, I've been a little bit under the weather. Hey, I'm sorry to hear that, David. Hope you're feeling better. But more importantly than that, I've really been spending the last couple days testing out our Grubhub integration. We were hoping to get Grubhub out a couple weeks ago, as I'm sure many of you remember, and we ran into an unexpected problem. So I remember them talking about this. A while back now, before DoorDash started blocking Paris tip transparency. So I'm really glad that, that they're, they've been working through this. And although I don't use Grubhub, I'm looking forward to seeing people's reactions and response to what David is about to say about what they're going to offer on Grubhub. The good thing is that uh, we believe that we've now solved this. So the last couple of days, I've been out delivering on Grubhub, and I'm able to get additional context around my pings, such as the total number of miles, uh, the end address, etc. So over the next couple of days, we're going to be rolling this out to a beta group of users, and then to everybody. We also found another Grubhub thing that might... All right, so if you're in that beta group of users, and you get this, and you see this video... Comment below, let me know if you're in that beta group, and let me know how that's working for you, because I'd really like to know that. Like I said, I can't get on Grubhub in my market. Might be helpful. We think that we should be able to show you when Grubhub expects the food to be ready. So hopefully that should solve that super frustrating feeling of when you show up to the restaurant and the order had just been placed, and you have to end up waiting 10, 15, 20 minutes. So yay to more transparency. In the name of transparency, I've been seeing a number of people in the group ask, you know, what is Para's role within tip transparency? And why am I starting to see other people other than David uh, commenting and moderating in the group? With this, I think it would be helpful to provide people with the story of how Para and tip transparency came to be. So Para started off as a side project, right? All right, so this is very important right here. And, and it's important because I don't think a lot of people realize how Para started. I was contacted in late 2020 about Para, and we might get into that a little bit later, but I, w I was contacted in December of 2020 about Para, and they actually shared with me before tip transparency went public, they shared some screenshots with me and showed me kind of what was coming. And I remember when I saw it, I was really excited to see that. But listen to how Para started. This is very important. Right at the beginning of COVID, it really frustrated me how hard it was for gig workers to understand their CARES Act options. I'm sure many of you remember when you didn't know what unemployment would pay you or EIDL or PPP, and each of the states had different regulations and different instructions. So what we did was we built a super simple calculator to help people make an informed decision. Our loyal users who've stuck around since then will remember when we used to call ourselves autonomy.jobs. So we put this basic tool out in the wild and were pleasantly surprised when over 5,000 people used the tool to help make an informed decision. And from there, we basically just continued to dig in on that same vein. What can we do to make gig workers' lives actionably better now? With this, we launched a couple... Okay, so this is an important point. What can we do to make gig workers' lives actionably better? A lot of times what we see in videos and, and is more philosophical. Right. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. This is how you consider an offer and whether or not you want to take it. But but there's really not a definite science behind it. And what Para has provided with their app, with Tip Transparency, is they have made it better and easier for gig workers to make that decision. 
multiple tools. One was an automatic earnings tracker across the different platforms you worked on. We also released a retroactive mileage calculator, so something that could use your work history to generate a mileage report if you hadn't tracked your miles previously. During the exploration for these other tools, we were also able to discover that we could show the hidden tip amount behind a DoorDash trip. I still remember the exact day. I was out there, I'd got work in, I'd gotten a ping from DoorDash asking me to go to South San Francisco. Our system sent me a text basically exposing that there was a $16 tip behind that trip. And I ended up taking a trip that I otherwise wouldn't have. And that was this moment where it clicked for myself and Jeff. So if you're a para user, do you remember the first time you got a notification, whether it was a text or in the app, depending on in, in what phase of the app you were in? Do you remember when you got that first notification and instead of something being like a three or four dollar trip, it ends up being 15 to 20 dollars. What a great feeling that was, right? To know, oh, this is really going to be worth my time and the wear and tear on my vehicle instead of, oh, well, okay, well, this meets my whatever, my, my whatever requirement, a dollar a mile, two dollars a mile, whatever it may be. Hopefully, I'll get a good tip at the end of it. Think back to that. And then let's think about how we can apply that to other apps as well. This is something that is super helpful. And this is something that we need to get into as many people's hands as quickly as possible. At first, we thought about did. charging a little bit of money per month just on the idea that we were helping to make dashers more money. But I think upon further thinking, we realized that that just didn't really feel right to us. At the end of the day, you know, we stand for some principles. We believe that gig workers should have the right to make an informed decision. We believe that gig workers should have the right to have tools that make their life easier. Right. And you cannot make an informed decision without all of the information about a trip. We believe that gig workers should have access to the data on the trips that they do easily. And we believe that gig workers should have competition for their time. At the end of the day, if the companies passed Prop 22 claiming that workers are independent contractors, it's within our rights to take full advantage of what that means to make life actionably better today. Right. So we put tip transparency out there, and at first it wasn't all smooth sailing. It took a while for people to trust what we were doing, but once the movement started, it really took off beyond even our wildest dreams. Yeah, when you think about at some point, they I think at some point they had 10% of all the DoorDashers in the country on the platform, 10%. Now, that may not seem like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, um, it's really what kind of drew attention, I think, to Para from DoorDash. If it had been, you know, 10,000 people instead of 100,000 or, or 150,000 people, on the platform, I don't think DoorDash would have done anything about it. But with 10%, they were able to statistically analyze data and see, hey, something's going on here. I'm still glad they did it. I'm still glad it got as popular as it did. And uh, I'm glad that Hera's not giving up. And you're going to hear more about that later on. As of yesterday, over 250,000 dashers have used tip transparency to make informed decisions for themselves. And with 200-something thousand people using the app, I'm sure you can understand that it very quickly became difficult for me uh, to respond to everybody yeah. and to give everybody the adequate love and attention that I wanted to. So it became necessary quite quickly for us to bring on help. So where is this all going, especially now that DoorDash has made some changes on their end? The first thing I want to make very clear, we are going to continue to launch transparency features, as mentioned earlier, Grubhub and another major platform. And we will always have this free and try to get it into as many. 
So I think the other major platform is Uber and Uber Eats. Uh, David actually used to work for Uber, and that's not private information. It's it's on uh, Para's website. I wonder, and and I hope that doing this doesn't cause any trouble for him. Um, I, I think Uber is pretty protective of their technology, and I would hate to see um, see David get sued or something like that because of his knowledge of how Uber used to work. I don't know necessarily if it does if that knowledge right now is applicable to what he's doing but we'll see down the road and 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 later on you'll see that he he talks about in a former life and that's important because i i think he doesn't want to mention uber by name um whether it's out of liability reasons or whatever but uh still let's go on many hands as possible i think really because we strongly believe that being able to make an informed decision is the fundamental right of a worker. But just transparency alone isn't enough to get us to the eventual goal, which is a truly worker-first gig economy. So what do we need to do to get there? Having worked at Uber many years ago in an old life, one of the key takeaways... Okay, so he so he does, he does mention it. Um, so, yeah... Uh, I, I don't remember, I, I couldn't remember after my first watching whether or not he mentioned it or not. They had from that is the only way to affect immediate change to a tech-enabled marketplace uh, is through technology representing the drivers. And that's really what we're going to be building at Para. The best way to push back on the algorithm is to have an algorithm that represents you and your sets and preferences that pushes back upon the platforms is own algorithms yeah so we got algos versus algos going here the battle of the algos i think this fits in well into our tip transparency movement so the first stream was what can we do to force these platforms to provide the information that drivers have the right to right now and para the second stream of work that we're doing is driven by the motivation of what can we do to ensure that workers are less dependent on any given platform. It's only by making... I like this too, what he mentions. Making sure that gig workers are less dependent on a single platform. Because if that single platform goes down, you're stuck. And, and you've heard the arguments before from other people. You need to be multi-apping. You need to be doing more than one thing. It's great if you have a primary source of income from one uh, gig app, but you need to be using more than one. Making each of us less dependent on a given platform and by giving the power back to you to decide when, how, and on which platform to work easily that we will be able to affect change quickly. Call me crazy, but I do mm, truly believe well, that platforms should be bidding for you and for your unit of time. Reach. Building this won't be easy, and I'll need help from every single one of you so that together we can turn this into a reality. To be upfront, in the last couple of weeks, we have raised a small amount of money from some investors. I feel thankful. Somehow we've managed to find investors who also believe that it's time for us to build a worker-first gig economy. We're using this to fund further development. So no. For those of you who asked, I have not sold out to DoorDash, and I definitely do not work for DoorDash. <laughs> so does this mean that we've sold out to transparency? Hell no. At the end of the day, both of these efforts are unified in our shared belief of making life actionably better for gig workers now. We're going to continue to push the envelope on the short term on transparency features, and this funding is meant to develop some of the harder stuff over the long term. I'm fiercely focused on one thing, which is can I build the best damn personal dispatch tool that puts powers back in your hand. And I'm a firm believer that if we're able to do that, everything else will be figured out. Yeah. So in that vein, you'll start to see some extra tools, auto accept, auto decline, preferences, maybe even new opportunities coming over the next couple months. I like these options. Um, auto accept, auto decline. 
there's there's one other particular app that works with DoorDash to do that. But being able to do this across multiple platforms, um, except for Maestro, who's done it with Rideshare on Uber and Lyft, there has not been another app that spans multiple platforms that lets you do that. So throwing in Grubhub and Uber Eats and DoorDash and Instacart and all these other delivery apps shipped, being able to have an app run in the background process everything that's coming in and determine which is the best trip and accept that one is going to save drivers a lot more time. It's going to be safer for drivers because drivers don't have to stare at their screen while they're driving and a, and a second request comes in. If, if there's one thing that drives me nuts about these apps is, and I was just out, del um, not delivering, but, but doing some ride share this morning is I'm driving down the road with a passenger in my vehicle and Uber starts offering me another ride while I'm moving. And I have to take my focus off of driving the vehicle and look at my screen for that brief moment of time. And, and if, I, if I don't respond to the ride and I don't accept it, I'm penalized. I'm penalized because I decided to make a decision to drive safer instead of um, looking at the screen while I'm driving and being distracted. I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to two new team members, Connor and Ellie. Uh, here after you, Connor. Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Connor. I recently joined the Para team about a month ago. And I'm really excited to be here to support you and to grow Para even further. You're going to see my name pop up in many places, especially if you reach out to our help at withpara.com email. I'll be working very close with David, Ellie, and the rest of our team to create the best tool and opportunities for you. And I will always be looking for and appreciating your feedback. Again, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, Connor and I had worked together in a, in a past life, so super excited to have him on the team. Uh, Ellie, how about you? Yeah. Thanks. Um, also really excited to be here. Uh, you probably saw me in the last video and, you know, I'm here for you um, and I'm here to help with the community. So you'll definitely see more emails, video and uh, Facebook posts for me. Um, always happy to hear suggestions and what you all think um, and um, would love to relay more of them to the team and help turn these into a product that is awesome and um, really helps you increase your earnings. No, yeah, that's awesome. I think at the end of the day, we're all here uh, for the group and for the movement. So hopefully together uh, with more people on the team, we'll be able to you know, help you out even more. I'm glad to see that they use some of this additional funding that they've got to hire people. And I'm also glad that they're making this video and putting a face to the name that you're going to be seeing in the email. One of the things that is so frustrating about these, um, these apps is you don't know what the person on the other end looks like. You can't contact a regional representative. Like there's no representative for upstate New York or uh, the five boroughs or San Francisco or San Diego. There's no representative that you can get in touch with and air your grievances too with Uber and Lyft and a lot of these other apps. They're, they're faceless names and they have no interest in really hearing from the drivers. Sure, they throw out all these platitudes and they um, put together these councils and get advice from drivers and things, but in the end, it's, it's all just there to try and make us feel better. Oh, and by the way, I do have to say, David, I love your 3D printer sitting in the background. So uh, don't be a stranger. Feel free to reach out to Connor and Ellie. They're always available to you. <clears throat> we want to take the time to speak a bit about our Facebook group, Tip Transparency Now. The Tip Transparency Now Facebook page was created by the Para team and is moderated by both Para staff and volunteers of the community who have been trained by Ellie and myself. At this time, 
we are looking to update the name of the group. And when we do, it will be something that clearly shows that this page is moderated by us at Para. I also wanted to share with everyone a reminder on why the group exists. First, that we want to build a positive community where workers can interact. Second, we would like to share announcements about the Para HQ app. And third, we want to gain feedback and insights on how we can improve your gig experience. Over the last two weeks, you may have noticed a transition from seeing comments and posts from David to the Para Inc. page. This is because our team has grown and Para is no longer an app created by a couple people at home, but we're now a young and growing company. Yeah, no, I think to second that, uh, you know, the group grew really quickly to over 200,000 people as yeah. part of this movement. Uh, and, and it got toxic real fast. So I'm really glad that they're addressing this. Fortunately, it just reached a point where I couldn't just respond to everybody anymore. So, you know, with the new team members, hopefully uh, you can get the love and attention that you warrant. I'm excited to show the group what we've been working on over the next one to two weeks. And I want to take this opportunity again to thank everybody for their belief in us and for being part of this movement. We believe that transparency is a right for any worker. Transparency allows people to make the informed decisions that are best for them and their livelihoods. We are going to continue to fight for your right for transparency and we're going to continue to push the envelope on DoorDash, Grubhub and other platforms that you work on. At the same time, we're going to continue to work on this personal dispatch system that I've described because we believe that that is a critical piece towards refocusing the gig economy on its most important part, you. Love this a personal dispatch system that can sort through all of these apps, logs onto all of them at the same time whenever it can, and it picks the best one based on criteria that you set, saves you time, keeps you safe while you're driving, and gives you the information, all of the information that you need to make a decision about a job that you're taking. The worker. As always, please let me know your thoughts, feedback, and comments below. I want to take this opportunity to thank you all again for being a part of our movement. Together, we can build a worker first gig economy now all right so great video i think from david i am looking forward to seeing more features from para i'm looking forward to seeing what they can do um, with getting full trip information tip information from uber eats uh, I mean, I, one thing that I would really like to see is if that information is being, when it comes to rides, when you're giving a ride, I don't see where the passenger is going. I know that they're five to 10 minutes away, but they could be driving 30, 35 minutes. What if I don't want to make a 30 minute drive? What if I want to stay close to my downtown area instead of driving out of the area so hopefully this will be added i don't know if they're going to roll that in i know that uber is pretty aggressive about and lyft too they're both very aggressive about blocking apps that pull more information out and they're pretty aggressive about uh deactivating people who have violated their terms of service so I think that's going to be a little bit of a uh, a tap dance, if you will, when it comes to that. Again, um, I have said this before. I have been behind Para since the first time Jimmy reached out to me in December of 2020. And he was asking me questions about some of the things that I would like to see in an app. I'm so happy to start seeing that stuff show up. And I'm, I'm also so happy to see that they're continuing to get funding so that they can continue to provide this app to us. I don't think it's going to be free forever because free is not a, a profit model. 
And when they do eventually roll it out, uh, what I would suggest for those of us who are already on the app is we can pay a one-time fee that would grandfather all or grandmother or grandperson us all in to having the app 100% for a lifetime. So whether that's, I mean, look, I would pay 50, 50 bucks one time. And if they got half the people that they have using that 50 times a hundred, that's a lot of money uh, that, that they could use to then develop the app. And then whether it's charge a monthly fee or a yearly fee to any new users at that point. Anyway, until next time, David, Connor, Ellie, Jimmy, um, Steve, and sorry, I can't remember the other one. The guy who does all the coding. You hardly ever see him. You guys are doing a great job. Keep up the great work. My name is John from Ride Upstate. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.